Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about that rather gross game that happened up in Lexington this past weekend. Georgia did come out with a win 13-12 to and they're going to have to figure out a lot of stuff before they go to Tuscaloosa in a couple of weeks. But let's get into this LSU game because this was the craziest game of the weekend. There is no two ways about that. If you have not watched this game, go back and watch it. It is as college football as you could possibly get right down to the officiating job. There were a number of calls throughout this game that were just terrible. I, I, there's really no other way to put it. I would love to sugarcoat this for the officiating crews, but man, there were a couple in this game that were just all over the place and had no business being called. The main among them being that unnecessary roughness against Kyle Kennard. I don't know how they got to that, frankly. I, I genuinely don't understand. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the rule. That's a defender. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer is a defender. After he throws that pick, once he starts running towards the ball, you were allowed to block him. Now, what I will say is Kyle Kennard had no business blocking him. He didn't need to block him, so that is the other part of the argument. doesn't necessarily matter to me. Whether he needed to or he didn't need to, it wasn't a penalty, plain and simple. So that was the uh, very, very tough one for South Carolina. There was an offensive pass interference call earlier in the game that was all over the place. I think the horse collar tackle was a horse collar tackle. I don't know if there's a real argument the other direction, but South Carolina fans were plenty mad about everything else, so that was one that got a little bit of attention as well. Overall, I think officiating played their role. That is That is for sure. They were a big part of this game when... That should never be the case, but they were a big part of this game. But the bigger part was obviously losing Lenora Sellers. When you lose a player like that on your offense that is so important, that brings so much energy to that team, and frankly, makes you just a little bit scared of this passing attack, uh, the South Carolina passing attack is not going to be scary. Let's just uh, call a spade a spade. They're not going to be an elite passing attack. The reality is, they're a little bit scarier with Lenora Sellers back there, and that's really all you need. Uh, when Robbie Ashford came into this game, it was very stagnant. LSU knew exactly what they were going to do, and they were saying, we're going to blitz a lot of people, we're going to force you to run the ball, and if you want to pass the ball, more than fine, Avery, uh, Robbie Ashford's going to miss guys. That's the reality of the situation, and that was exactly what LSU did throughout the entirety of the second quarter, or second half, was just attack. Uh, all-out attack from start to finish because they knew the guy back there did not have the ability of the other guy. Now, Lenora Seller's arm is not necessarily the craziest thing in the world, and they weren't lighting LSU up down the field, but the biggest difference is Lenora Sellers in this game had 10 carries, 88 yards before he left it. Robbie Ashford comes in, 11 carries, 11 yards. That's the big difference. If, uh, if Rocket Sanders is the only thing you have to worry about for LSU's defense, they're going to look successful. They're going to be able to stop you at least from time to time, and they did let Rocket Sanders get uh, lost in one of those. But overall, I think there are a number of different things to take away, and obviously South Carolina fans are going to say this thing got stolen from them, and I in some ways agree with you. I'm not necessarily taking that away, but LSU coming back from 17 down is a big deal. You know, there are a number of things that had to happen in this game, probably one of them being sellers going down, unfortunately, for LSU to find their way back into this game, but also LSU had to do a lot of things right. They had to play a lot of really good football and had to attack on the defensive side of the ball, and they did a really good job of that in the second half. So as many chances that were taken out of uh, South Carolina's hands, I fully understand how upset you are. I, I'm not necessarily trying to tell you that you have no reason to be mad at the officiating. You definitely do. It was an absolute nightmare from start to finish and something that has to be figured out by the SEC uh, office and really just college football overall. But we can get into that tomorrow. I definitely will want to talk about th that tomorrow. But overall, I think a good win for LSU, a devastating loss for South Carolina, but how did LSU get it done? Because a lot of things had to go right, obviously, but I narrowed in on a couple of big-time things here. I think Caden Durham coming in changed this game. Uh, overnight, there was a second where Caden Durham walked onto the field, the next play, or uh, two plays later, touchdown, and then they opened so many different things up where this run game is not scary by any means. You know, Caleb Jackson, Josh Williams, they're solid players. Caden Durham gives them something. Gave, Caden Durham gives them a spark that they very badly needed. And that third, third and nine call for that touchdown where he, that was a great call, a great run, just a crazy call in some ways, but it worked out beautifully. And this is a really special athlete. It's one of those guys that I know you want to give uh, preference to Caleb Jackson and Josh Williams that have done all the work and are comfortable in the offense. And I get all of that. The reality is, 
Sometimes you just need the most athletic kid on the field. Sometimes you just need the kid that is going to create holes for himself and the kid that is going to play as hard as can be because he is a freshman, because he does want to prove himself. So 11 carries, 98 yards, two touchdowns in this game. He did everything that they needed him to do, and he was the spark that they very badly needed on the offensive side of the ball. So the freshman came up huge, and they badly need someone to step up in that run game, and maybe it's him, who knows. But The other part was something we've talked about, creating issues in pass rush. Um, After Lenora Sellers went down, it was all about just dialing it up in the second half. It was all about getting getting after Robbie Ashford, making him beat you with his arm, and if he's not going to do that, then he's not going to win. That's just the reality of Robbie Ashford right about now. So Harold Perkins ended with three tackles, one tackle for a loss. That is not even near the effect that he had on this game. He was all over the place in this game, and he created so many problems, and more than anything, created a lot of free rushes for Brandon Swinson, who went three sacks, was absolutely a game wrecker in this game. I believe had a forced fumble late in this one as well, but really, really incredible. And the biggest factor here is, if you can't throw the ball downfield, Blake Baker's scheme is going to look really good. They like to be on attack mode. They like to play man coverage on the back end. If your receivers are not going to be able to get separation and your quarterback is not going to be able to put it there, LSU is going to be able to run the defense that they want to run. Uh, so this kind of gives you an idea. That second half gives you an idea of what this looks like in the best possible circumstances. This is what it, it should look like in two or three years when Blake Baker really gets rolling at LSU is – They should be on attack mode pretty much from start to finish. They should have really good coverage uh, corners on the back end that can play man coverage pretty much every down, and they'll be able to win a lot of games. The thing is... When you, once you face an elite passing team that has that you know counterpunch to what you're, you're trying to do, it's going to be really hard to beat those teams. It doesn't mean that they're not moving in the right direction. I think Blake Baker's scheme obviously works. You know, There's enough guys in that room to make it work. The thing is, this was a team that made it look a lot better because of the passing attack that South Carolina has or lack thereof. Uh, It made it a lot easier for LSU to kind of just zero in on that. And then finally, the responding. Uh, I think this was something that we've talked about a lot. Uh, Winning when you're down uh, 17-0 away from home, that's a big deal. There's no two ways about that. I know a lot of things went LSU's direction in this game, but the reality is a lot of things had to go their direction, and a lot of things... South Carolina kind of handed LSU in a number of different ways. So we can talk about a number of different things, but uh, SC had a 14-point lead nearing halftime. LSU was able to force a fumble, get back, and score a touchdown. They also... uh, Oh, excuse me, and then get the ball back and score the winner. They did a number of really, really good things throughout this game. LSU also took the lead on the first play of the fourth quarter, and then Rocket Sanders came back in three plays and ran, I believe, 67 yards for a touchdown, and then they responded right back. So LSU just had enough plays. It was the same thing as Georgia had up in Lexington, where a lot of things went crazy, a lot of things were all over the place, and a lot of things were downright wrong in this game don't get me uh, wrong about that but the reality is I do think this is one of those games where LSU badly needed it I think South Carolina really wanted it I think there were a number of things that really went their way and or really went LSU's direction that kept them from doing what they wanted to do but obviously you got to move forward you got to figure out what you're going to do I know the SEC offices are getting just blown up from South Carolina right about now but at the end of the day we'll see what happens with it we'll see if any of those calls are you know reversed it doesn't matter if they're reversed but maybe it'll make South Carolina fans feel a little bit better overall a very very frustrating game in a number of different ways depending on the way you were watching it but at the end of the day a very fun game up and down craziness college football all of it was absolutely there and the only advice I would have for South Carolina is keep your fans in their seats uh, before the game is ended just a general rule whenever a game is within one score down the stretch of the game just stay in your seats you'll you'll have time to get down to the field you'll have time to rush the field I promise you just don't tempt fate uh, because they tried to do that and it did not work and now a lot of them are getting made fun of but overall I think where do you go from here this one hurts for South Carolina it's really hard for me to look at this one as anything less than kind of a nightmare coming out of this weekend you had a lot of calls go against you you were coming off a game where you thought you were playing really good football maybe able to turn some stuff around do some really good things and then you get you get a huge game at home, game days in town, LSU, obviously not necessarily the elite team in the SEC, but they're still LSU. That still uh, carries a lot of weight. 
and you were able to push them to the limit. You were able to go up 17. You were able to really uh, get elite pass rush against one of the best offensive lines in the country. You were able to do so many great things in this game, and then you just come up short. And now you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, what do we do now? You're 2-1. and one, You still have plenty of games in front of you, but they're not easy games by any means. So it's not like LSU is going to be the toughest game that South Carolina plays. There are plenty coming up, including South Carolina – or. Ole Miss coming to South Carolina in a couple of weeks, but overall, I think you got to just regroup and keep it moving. You're a team that's playing relatively good football right now. I don't know that it's going to be all that impressive of a season from South Carolina, but man, this felt like the game where if they were able to win this game, we'd be talking about them totally differently, but as we walk out of it, I have some questions just about what this team can do this upcoming year, not because of what I think this team is, because I really didn't change my opinion too much about South Carolina after this game, but there's so many teams in front of them that are going to play cleaner football than LSU. That's just the reality. So it's hard for me to sit here and say South Carolina can bounce back and make themselves a uh, SEC dark horse because there's just too many games there. Maybe they can, maybe that pass rush can get them there, but as of right now, it's just a really terrible loss and a chance that really could have flipped this program on its head pretty quickly. But LSU on the other side, I think when you come out of this game, I don't know if there was anyone that was any more impressed with LSU after this game than they were before. The resiliency was great and being able to come back from 17 down is a very big deal. There's no two ways about that. But At the end of the day, they did not play great football in this game. They were a little bit all over the place defensively, especially early on. The only time that they were able to do stuff defensively was when a quarterback was on the field that they were not worried about throwing the ball, and there were a number of things on the offensive side of the ball that were not as clean as they had been in past weeks. So overall, I think LSU played good enough. You know, they got the job done, they move on with a win, and that's really the end-all be-all here, right? LSU was just trying to stay in the hunt. They, they're trying to stay in the race for the SEC, and getting this win, now you have UCLA coming to town, South Alabama before a bye week, and then you got Ole Miss coming to town. So you got a couple of weeks here where LSU could get two big wins, go into a bye week, and then who knows who they are when Ole Miss comes to town. Who knows how much they've fixed and how much they've gotten better in. Maybe they're a team that can get that win, and if they do, then we're officially talking about them back in the CFP hunt. After a really gross week one, it would be crazy to think that, but as of right now, LSU did just enough to stay in the hunt, and but try to do that next week and the week after and see where they land in November. But a crazy game, one of those that a lot was decided by the people that were not wearing the football jerseys, but at the end of the day, that's part of our sport. And I will get into that tomorrow. I have plenty of uh, calls from this past weekend that were just mind-boggling at the end of the day. But uh, for more than anything else, really, really fun game. LSU gets a big win. South Carolina, still a lot of positives to take away from this game, but Definitely one where you feel like you left them a lot on the table. Game day in town, LSU in town, your fans fully behind you. Just felt like that one was one that slipped away that you're going to really wish you had back uh, at the end of the season. But at the end of the day, you keep moving forward. You try to bounce back and see what you can do in the SEC this upcoming year. But let's take a break, and then we'll get into the rest of the SEC teams. We'll get into Bama handling Wisconsin, Missouri outlasting Boston College, Texas A&M just rolling Florida and Maybe a firing happening there here pretty soon, but we'll break that down right after this, so stick with us.